Let's talk about valuing a currency swap. So if you're not familiar, let's just recap um, what a currency swap is. It's something that's oftentimes used when companies make cross-border capital investments. So for example, a U.S. parent company wants to finance a project undertaken by its, US, by its subsidiary in Japan, and the project proceeds would be used to pay interest and principal. Now, what are their options? They could borrow in U.S. dollars, convert those dollars to yen, but this exposes the company to exchange rate risk. They could also borrow in Japan, but because the subsidiary may not be well known in Japan, they may pay a higher rate than they would in the U.S. So the third alternative is to find a counterparty and set up a currency swap. So cross-currency swaps are more complicated than single currency agreements. So for example, if you had an interest rate swap, you're dealing with a single currency, it makes it much easier. And the reason the cross-currency swap is complicated is because cash flows are denominated in different monetary units, and so the principal amounts are usually exchanged at the origination and maturity dates of the contract. Because you have two currencies and the interest rates can either be fixed or floating, then you have four possible cases. So, for example, if this is a U.S. company, you could have a fixed U.S. and a fixed foreign, for a fixed foreign rate. You could have a floating U.S. rate for a fixed foreign rate. You could have a fixed U.S. rate for a floating foreign rate, or you could have a floating U.S. rate for a floating foreign rate. So the most common is a fixed foreign for a floating U.S. rate, and that's based on LIBOR, the uh, London Interbank Offer Rate. Now, let's take a look at a little picture here to get an idea of how this works. So let's say Company A is the U.S. bank, or the U.S. company, and Company B is the Japanese company they're both going to have advantages, a comparative advantage borrowing in their local market because they are better known. So company A is going to issue bonds in the US market. Company B is going to issue bonds in the Japanese market. We're going to bring a swap bank in between the two of them and company A is going to pay the swap bank the foreign rate, make the foreign payment, and company B, the Japanese company, is going to make the payments, you know, in dollars at the U.S. rate. But the Japanese company is going to receive the um, Japanese payments in uh, at the Japanese rate, and that's going to cancel out this. So essentially, company B is paying the U.S. rate in dollars. Company A is paying the Japanese rate in yen, Right, So they've borrowed in their home currency, but converted it into a um, loan in the other country's currency and at the other country's rate. So how do you do the valuation? Well, if there's no default risk, the currency swap can be decomposed into a position in two bonds. The same as an interest rate swap. So the value of the swap is going to be equal to S, which is the spot exchange rate, and that's going to be expressed as the number of units of the domestic currency per foreign currency. Okay, so how much, um, how many dollars it takes to buy a yen. That's what we call a direct quote from the U.S. perspective. Okay, if we happen to be talking about dollars as a domestic currency, we sometimes refer to that as an American quote. Now, you have to be careful whenever you're dealing with foreign exchange rates because you can quote this two ways. We could also quote how many yen it takes to buy a dollar. So whenever you see formulas like this, you have to know how the exchange rate is quoted. Okay, BF and BD are going to be the values of the foreign and domestic bonds in their currency.
Okay, so let's, uh, let's consider this example. Okay, consider a fixed rate interest payment in the US for a fixed rate interest payment in Japan. Let's assume the term structure of interest rates is flat for both the US and Japan. So this assumption means that we use the same rate when we do the discounting to value the bond. We're going to assume that the Japanese rate is 4% and it's going to have continuous compounding. We're going to assume that the US rate is 9% with continuous compounding. So a financial institution enters into this currency swap and, and they want to figure out what the value is. This financial institution is going to receive 5% per annum in yen and 8% per annum in dollars once a year. So let's figure out what the cash flows are going to be. We're going to have principles of $10 million and 1.2 billion yen or 1,200 million yen. The swap's going to last for three years and the current exchange rate is 110 yen per dollar. So let's just note that this is actually an indirect quote, number of units of yen, number of yen to buy US dollar. So when we do that formula we had there, we're not going to be multiplying the, this exchange rate times the value of the foreign bond. We're actually going to be dividing this into the um, value of the bond. What are the interest payments on the US bond? We said that the bank receives 8% of this $10 million, so they get 0.8 million, right? 800,000 per year. That's what they're paying. They receive 5% um, on the Japanese investment here of, of 1.2 billion yen. So this is going to turn out to be 60 million yen. That's what they receive. So let's look at the valuation. The valuation for the US bond is, remember they're receiving 0.8 million or 800, um, 800,000 and we're going to discount it, right? They get three years of this and it's discounted by uh, using continuous compounding. So the discounting factor is going to be e to the minus the interest rate times the number of periods. So in this case, e to the minus 0 .09, 0 0.09 times 1 plus 0.8 times e to the minus 0 0.09 times 2, etc. And then remember, you get the principal back at the end, which was the 10 million. So if you do that valuation, you get uh, 9.64 million dollars. What's the value of the Japanese bond? Remember they're receiving 60 million yen and we're going to discount by 4% so e to the minus 0 0.04 times 1 etc. Right and then in that final year they're getting back uh, 1260 e to the minus 0 0.04 uh, to the third power as well. And if you do that valuation, you get um, one point, uh, I'm sorry, 1.23055 billion yen or 1230.55 or million yen. So the last thing we have to do is convert this to dollars using the exchange rate and then subtract this from this. So the value of the foreign bond would be this 1230.55 times uh, one divided by one dollar divided by 110 yen. Remember that this is in um, this was the indirect quote. And you can see that this works mathematically, right? The yen units cancel, and now you have this in terms of dollars. So it turns out to be 11.1 11.19 million dollars and let's just do the subtraction 11.19 minus 9.64 so the value of the swap is 1.55 uh, million dollars so I hope that helps okay it's a fairly straightforward calculation okay not too hard to do once you understand that 
you're just essentially valuing two bonds and doing um, looking at the difference between the two after you adjust for exchange rates.